Chippendales is best known for its muscular male dancers, exuberant crowds of women, and dynamic shows. But the Chippendales murders proved that the lighthearted franchise had a dark side. In the 1980s and 1990s, Chippendales founder Steve Banerjee plotted multiple deaths. He orchestrated the murder of his business partner, set out to kill his rivals, and firebombed his competition. Though Banerjee was eventually caught, his death before his sentencing brought a shocking end to the story of the Chippendales murders. Welcome or welcome back to True Stories, join our family in exploring some of the most twisted true crime cases. As always, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. Now, let's get into it. In 1975, an Indian immigrant named Soman Steve Banerjee bought a struggling Los Angeles bar called Destiny 2. He renamed it Chippendales and sought to jumpstart its reputation in the City of Angels. Though Banerjee was soft spoken, he wanted Chippendales to be loud and fun. He took the advice of promoter Paul Snyder, who later shot and killed Playboy model Dorothy Stratton in 1980, before turning the gun on himself and started a male exotic dance night for ladies only in 1979. At first, all the guys were worried about their image, Banerjee recalled. But the show delighted female customers, who soon lined up to get in. It was the first time ever where something was completely geared to the ladies, explained Candace Marin, the former associate producer for Chippendales. We built an environment for women to let it all hang out. But as Chippendales expanded, Banerjee became dangerously obsessed with protecting its success, even if it meant resorting to violence. In 1979, he quietly sent someone to burn down Moody's Disco, a rival nightclub. And in 1984, he tried to do the same at the Red Onion restaurant and bar. Meanwhile, Banerjee had started working with New York-based producer and choreographer Nick DeNoia to expand Chippendale's business. But Banerjee and DeNoia butted heads. According to Reed Scott, a Chippendale's dancer, they used to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and just scream and curse at each other. Banerjee envied DeNoia's creativity and charisma. He also resented that people had started referring to Denoya, and not Banerjee, as Mr. Chippendales. And though he, and Denoya, had made a deal on a napkin that gave Denoya 50% of the profits from Chippendales tours, Banerjee began to suspect that Denoya was shortchanging him. In 1987, Steve Banerjee decided he'd take care of Nick Denoya, for good. That year, the Chippendales murders began in earnest. On April 7, 1987, a gunman walked into Nick DeNoia's 15th floor New York office and shot him in the left cheek. DeNoia died, and many at Chippendales suspected they knew who was behind the hit. I'm going to kill that Steve Banerjee, one of the dancers told Marin. As for Marin, she also thought that Banerjee was guilty. She wrote, there wasn't a scintilla of doubt in my mind that it was Steve either. Indeed, Steve Banerjee had orchestrated DeNoia's murder. The FBI eventually pieced together that Banerjee had hired a man named Ray Colon to kill Denoya. Colon, in turn, enlisted the services of Gilberto Rivera Lopez. Ultimately, Lopez had been the one to shoot Banerjee's rival. The story of the Chippendales murders might have ended there. But despite rumors, nothing linked Banerjee to the scene. He remained free and even bought back the Chippendales touring rights from Denoya's family. But Banerjee continued to ruthlessly protect the franchise that he had built. In 1991, he hired Colin again. This time, Banerjee wanted him to go to England and kill a number of former Chippendales employees, including Scott, who'd left Chippendales for a rival troupe called Adonis. Just like with the murder of Denoya, Colin enlisted a hitman to get the job done. But the hitman, known only as Strawberry, got cold feet and decided to reach out to the FBI. He explained to the agents that Colin had given him cyanide, a list of names, and instructions to go to England. Any agent, whether you're straight out of the academy or whether you're a 25-year agent, this is the kind of case you want to get involved in, recalled FBI Special Agent Scott Gariola, who investigated the Chippendales murders. Gariola explained, not only did we have this conspiracy to kill people over in London, but we have a murder which actually occurred in New York in 1987. We have two arsons we have to investigate, and this conspiracy extended from the mid-70s all the way up until 1991. The FBI searched Colin's house and found enough cyanide to kill 230 people. And Colin, after stewing in jail for seven months, finally agreed to help authorities solve the Chippendales murders. Over the next several months, the FBI tried to use Ray Colin to get Steve Banerjee to confess on tape. But Banerjee proved difficult to pin down. When the two men met on June 23, 1992, in an IHAP bathroom, Banerjee refused to say anything out loud. 
When Colin asked him questions, Banerjee only wrote his answers down on post-it notes. He then tore the notes up and threw them in the toilet, flushing them down the drain. Banerjee even demanded that Colin strip down to prove that he didn't have a wiretap. Colin did, but he managed to conceal it in the flap of his underwear. Still, authorities got nowhere in their investigation. We don't capture anything on a recording device, Gariola explained. There's a lot of rustling and you could hear whisper talking, you could hear scratching of a pencil. You just can't hear anything of value. Undeterred, the FBI decided to try again. They had Colin convince Banerjee that he was a fugitive on the run. Banerjee apparently bought the story and agreed to meet with him in Zurich, Switzerland. This time, with agents listening through a wall, Banerjee was more forthcoming. We hear Banerjee confess to his complicity in hiring Ray Colin for the murder of Denoya. They talk about the attempted murders of Reed Scott and other dancers, Gariola said. We were able to get the evidence that we needed. In September 1993, the FBI arrested Banerjee. The Chippendales founder was then charged with hiring a hitman to kill the former dancers with Denoya's murder and with violating the Federal Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, RICO, through murder, murder for hire, solicitation to commit murder, and arson. He faced 26 years in prison. But on the day before Banerjee's sentencing, October 23, 1994, the Chippendales murder case took one final, shocking twist. There was no way I was going to miss Steve's sentencing, recalled Marin. I was on the courthouse steps with our MC and two of our dancers when someone came out and said there would be no hearing because Steve had ended his life in jail the night before. I felt cheated big time. Banerjee had hanged himself in his prison cell, having allegedly said that he'd leave the country or kill himself rather than go to prison. Ban this marked a stunning conclusion to the Chippendales murder saga. It also highlighted a shocking truth that Chippendales, a franchise based on fun and dancing, had its roots in arson, betrayal, and murder. We've come to the end, thank you for watching. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. Till next time.